Hey team, welcome in. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about some changes that you can potentially make to jumpstart your journey towards healing. Now, a lot of people think that they just cannot afford a health or fitness professional, but we disagree. We think that the average person actually can afford to invest into their health, but we just have to look at how we are prioritizing some of the things in our life. So your new life is going to cost you your old one. Are you willing to give up the things that made you sick in order to find healing? Well, we're going to find out right now. So if we look at the average American household, we're going to go over different components that people are doing, but that are actually hindering their results. So first off here, we're talking about eating out. Okay. And this is all based on averages, guys. Everybody's going to look a little bit different, but the average American eats about 18 meals outside of their home. So they're eating out at least 18 times throughout the month. So on average, again, they're spending about $232 per month eating out. Now, if we kind of narrow that down even more, we talk about fast food, you know, which is definitely not conducive for finding healing or for getting results when it comes to living a healthier lifestyle. Um, the average American individual spends about $100 a month eating fast food. Now, if we look at a household, a family, or people living under the same roof, okay, they are spending about 10% of their household income on fast food alone. So when we really start looking at these numbers, when we start looking at the facts, the statistics, and then maybe compare this to your situation, are there some improvements that we can make here when it comes to the food that we're consuming, how often we're eating out, the quality of food that we're getting, how often we're getting it, and what does that look like if we start eating at home? What does that look like if we start eating fresher whole foods that are going to keep us fuller longer because they're providing us with the nutrients that we need to sustain us? And they're also going to help us find healing. So if we can start swapping these things out, you'll notice that you're spending a lot of money in areas that are not needed and are not conducive for your overall wellness. All right, we're moving on here. We're just going to go over a few things. Starbucks. <laughs> How many of you guys have Starbucks consistently? And I'm not even just talking about coffee. I'm talking about just Starbucks. How many of you guys go through the Starbucks drive through or you stop in and you grab your cup of coffee or something similar from them every single day or every single week? Well, if you're like the average American, then you're spending about $44 to $80 per month on Starbucks alone. Again, we're not talking about just coffee or caffeine. We're talking about just Starbucks. So obviously that number is going to increase for people who are eating uh, coffee at home as well. $44 to $80 per month. Now we know, guys, that Starbucks is filled um, with a lot of refined sugars, a lot of unnecessary ingredients um, that are not conducive for our overall health, wellness, and healing. But we're still spending a significant amount of money towards that. So if you're somebody that eats or drinks Starbucks um, consistently, that might be something to look into. Because the reality is, is that you don't need it. And if we're talking about coffee, in a perfect world, we would be drinking coffee black. You don't need all that extra stuff in it because those things are not getting you closer to your goals. They're actually making you more addicted to certain types of foods and they're keeping you sick. They're keeping you overweight. They're making you tired, lethargic, independent on that drug to make it through the whole day. Because how many of you guys even have Starbucks multiple times a day or coffee multiple times a day? Because you notice sometime in that mid-afternoon, 
you start to feel lethargic again. You feel like you need that energy boost, so you grab that cup of coffee, that cup of coffee again. All right, guys, $44 to $80 per month. All right, now we're getting into some other stuff here. I know not everybody does this, but a lot of people do. Smoking, and we're talking specifically about cigarettes. So if you smoke other things, other tobacco, products um, potentially, you know, you're gonna have to add that up and see what that looks like for you. But on average, um, the cost of a pack of cigarettes is, you know, uh, I don't remember the exact cost, but it differs on, uh, obviously depending on where you live. I think it's like a little over $6 or something like that on average. Um, so if you smoke a pack a day, which a lot of people do, okay? Now, to some of you, you may think like, I could never do that or I don't smoke at all, okay? We're not talking about you, but there's other things that we can add in here. But if you're a smoker, if you smoke, specifically cigarettes, a pack a day is costing you about $188 per month. You know, depending on where you live, that might be a little bit less, it might be a whole lot more. So, guys, obviously we know that smoking's not good for you, whether it's cigarettes or uh, cigars or anything like that. Um, Add up what that looks like. Be honest with yourself. You know, when was the last time that you went over a budget and you actually calculated these numbers and how much you're spending on certain things? Now, depending on what you're smoking, you may have cravings afterwards after you smoke. So are you factoring that in as well? How much are you spending at the gas station running and going to grab some snacks? Okay? Factor it up. Look it up. Look at your personal budget. Figure it out. Know what that number is. And can we start reducing and eliminating that uh, expense so we can invest it somewhere else that's going to be more conducive for what we're wanting to accomplish? All right, another big one here, alcohol. Okay, so um, the average American spends about 1% of their gross annual income on alcohol. So on average, it's like about $565 a year for the average American. So you're looking at like roughly a little under $50 a month, right? On alcohol, okay? Some you might not do that. Some you might do a lot more. But these are just things I want you to start thinking of and, and paying attention to. Really write out your budget and, and look um, in depth into these things that we're talking about. And we can go so much deeper into this. We can talk about the upcoming holidays, you know? Are you willing to go bankrupt for Christmas, right? But you're not willing to invest into your health. These are hard, tough questions that we need to be asking ourselves. We need to be writing um, our budget out, our expenses, and being honest with where every single penny is going so that we can better dictate how to spend our money and ultimately what that looks like. I always have said and I've always believed you will know the heart of a person if you can see their paycheck, if you can see their bank account and where their money is going. So it doesn't matter how much a person makes, it matters where they spend that money and where they spend that money is ultimately going to tell you where their heart is. What do they care about? What do they prioritize? So if I were to look at how you're spending your money, would I see health? Would I see healing? Would I see vitality? Energy? What would I see? Or would I see sickness? Disease? Lack of energy? Lack of focus? Lack of clarity? What would I see? Be honest with yourself. But I really just wanted to kind of open your eyes a little bit more because so many people think that they cannot afford Nate or myself or people like us that are here to help you in your journey to wellness, most people will just write it off and say, well, I could never afford that. But if we really dig deep into where your heart is, where you prioritize things, you might. You very well, most likely even, could afford services like ours. If we make some changes, if we eliminate or at least reduce some of these um, harmful things that we're doing to our body that are not going to help us reach our goals when we're talking in terms of health, okay? If 
health is your goal, if healing is your goal, if overall wellness is your goal, then we need to start removing these things. You can't ask for healing and then not be willing to get rid of the things that are making you sick, that made you sick in the first place. So these things have to go anyway, which means the amount of money that you are spending on these areas is now available and free for you to utilize in other areas that are going to be beneficial, more beneficial. So that's all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to put that out there um, in your minds, in your hearts for you to think about a little bit more and to kind of uh, personalize to what you're doing today and what changes you could make to better improve your overall health. I love you guys so much. I'm always here for you. And please do not hesitate to reach out to Nate or myself. We offer complimentary wellness evaluations, so absolutely no cost to you. We can kind of go over some of these things as well as your goals and how we can help you to see if this is realistic for you. So if you're ready to make that jump, if you're ready to take that next step, please message us privately or you can even comment below and we can schedule your complimentary consultation today. And as always, family, never give up, never lose hope, never settle. I'll see you here, same time, same place, next week for your weekly dose of Trainer Talk Tuesday. Until then.